This question says, alanine is one of the amino acids. Based on the list doc structure below, which in this case, you need to add some lone pairs, particularly to the oxygens to make sure they have octet. Um, draw the complete vesper structure for each central atom, determine the electron domain, the molecular geometry, and the hybridization. Count the sigma and pi bonds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first add in octet on all of our oxygens. So in order to do that, we're gonna have two here and, oops, that's, and two here. So now everyone has octet. Oops, this nitrogen also doesn't have octet. So you could have also counted all of your valence electrons. More than likely for a question like this, you would be provided all of the structural information. So when you're asked to draw a Vesper structure for a molecule that doesn't just have one central atom, my recommendation, and I'm gonna use my red mark pen here, is to find a chain of atoms that all go together. This means that when you start drawing your Vesper structures from the left to the right, you want those to kind of be connected. So I'm going to start with my carbon on the left. And we know that there are one, two, three, four things connected, which means that it's tetrahedral. So we're gonna call this, so for C1, it's tetrahedral, tetrahedral. And the hybridization in this case is sp3. So back to our structure. So the question is, which atoms go where? Technically, it doesn't matter. You can put anything you want anywhere you want. I want the things that are highlighted in red to be in the plane of the paper. And the reason I want them in the plane of the paper is because, frankly, it will be a little bit easier. The other thing is, if you were to put the carbon here, and then you need to add more to it, it's going to go here. It's just it's just going to get messy. So we're going to put the other carbon here. And then we're going to add our hydrogens here. And this is carbon one, and this will be two. So if you look at carbon two, how many things are connected to it? One, two, three, four. Okay, that means it's also tetrahedral. And we know that tetrahedral looks like this. So again, I'm going to put the carbon connected to an oxygen, so C3, here for a couple of reasons. One, the longer the chain that you can make in the plane of the paper, the easier your life will be. Let's look at why that is true. So we're going to put our hydrogen here for carbon two. Now we're going to put our nitrogen here. And this nitrogen is sticking out of the plane of the paper, but has three things connected to it. So one is out, one is behind, and two are in the plane of the paper. So it just gets a little bit more complicated to annotate 3D in this way. And that's pretty close, but not great. So as you can see, my drawings get a little messy once you start to get away from the main chain. And so, you need to show the bond angles the best that you can. We are looking for things like approximately 109, not 90 degrees. So let's come back to carbon three. It was connected to three things, which means that it should be roughly 120 degrees. As we see here, this oxygen is connected to technically three things because the lone pair still count. We have our lone pairs, we have our hydrogen. So now we have this molecule. And you can see that if you would have put carbon two coming off of this hydrogen here, it just really would have gotten quite complicated. So let's go in and complete the rest of this question. So what, we have a Vesper structure for each central atom. So we have, we'll say three or four central atoms, so C2. C2 is also tetrahedral, tetrahedral, and sp3. So let's look at C3. There are three things connected, which means it's a steric number of three. That is trigonal planar. It's 
trigonal planar. And that's sp2. I'm going to also do this oxygen here, even though it's not really a central atom. So for the oxygen, we'll call this one. It is tetrahedral. Bent. SP3. So anything that is steric number four, regardless of what the molecular shape is, is SP3. The hybridization is related to the number of orbitals that are mixed together. The number of orbitals mixed together is the steric number. So for our last, I don't want to call it trick, but the last part of this question is to count the sigma and the pi bonds. So I'm going to come over here, and I am not going to be able to erase things. There it is. So I am erasing this for the sole reason that we want to be able to actually use this information. So the sigma bonds, I'm going to highlight in red so that we can easily count. So in this case, I highlighted them all but didn't count them. So briefly, I see that there are 12 red lines. And the trick is, what about the pi bonds? So a double bond is one sigma and one pi. So in this case, there is just one pi bond. So every single bond is a sigma bond. A double bond is one sigma, one pi, and a triple bond is one sigma and two pi's.